Hello Ace, this is Retro TK2 and welcome to this version control tutorial. Today we're setting up our remote repository Ace. We'll also look at a brief comparison between three popular Git hosting sites. So let's get started. Well, what is a repository? According to Google, a repository is a centralized location in which data is stored and managed. The standard process is to have a local copy of the repository on your machine with a remote copy on one of the Git hosting sites. This is not mandatory is, but it's generally a good idea to have a central place for syncing changes. A remote repository can be public or private is. A public repository can be copied by anyone, whereas a private repo can only be copied by specified users. Let's set up a local repository. You can use an existing project or create a new one is. Open source tree. In order for us to execute git commands on our local repository and for us to sync changes with our remote repository, we'll need to update our credentials is. Click tools, then options. Type in an alias to the full name text field is. For the email address field, type the one you're going to use when we sign up to our repository's host website. These are the details git will use to communicate with our remote repository is. If these credentials are wrong, the repositories won't sync with each other. To create a repository, click the Clone New icon in the top left corner and then click the Create New Repository tab. Put the path to your project in the Destination Path text field is and click Create. Your repository will now be added to the bookmarks in the left menu is. If you've converted an existing project to a Git repository, you'll have to commit all the files in that project is. I'll discuss this process in greater detail in later videos. For now, follow on as we create our first commit. Click the File Status tab and click the checkbox beside Unstaged Files. This will move all your files into the staged area, yes. More on this in later videos. Type a message into the Commit Message text box, yes, and click Commit. Click the Log History tab and you should see your first commit. Now we'll set up a remote host. I'd advise you not to use Dropbox as a remote host, yes, as it tends to corrupt your repositories. But if you fancy an experiment, be my guest. There are several hosting sites to choose from, yes. The three we'll briefly look at are GitHub, GitLab, and Bitbucket. There's a great comparison between these three on the website Slant. The link is in the description, yes. It lays out all the pros and cons of each service and allows their users to agree or disagree with the statements. I'm not going to go into all the features of each service, yes, but feel free to check them out yourself. GitHub is the most popular of the three, yes, but only public repositories are free. Both Bitbucket and GitLab offer unlimited private repositories for free. However, with Bitbucket, you're allowed only 5 users on each repo. Bitbucket also has a size limit for its repositories, yes, with a soft limit of 1 gig and a hard limit of 2 gigs. GitLab doesn't have such limits, yes, and that's why it's my preferred hosting site. Feel free to use a different hosting site, yes, the setup should be similar with any of them. Head to the GitLab website and click Sign In. Here you can sign in with your account or create a new one, yes. Don't forget to use the same email address as the one we entered in the source tree. Also make sure you activate the account via email or you won't be able to sync. Once you've logged in, you'll be brought to a list of all your projects. Click New Project, yes. Enter in the project's name and add a description for it. Choose the repository's type, yes. Usually you'll want to keep your repository private unless you're planning to share it with the general public. Once you're done, click Create Project. Make sure there are no spaces in the project's name, yes, as this will cause an error. Now that our project has been set up on GitLab, we need to sync our local repository to it. Copy the remote repository's URL. Head back into Source Tree and click the Settings icon in the top right corner. Here we can add a remote repository's path. Click Add and give your remote a name, yes. The standard name for a remote repo on source tree is Origin is, but feel free to call it GitLab or something else if you prefer. Paste the remote's URL into the URL path text field and click OK. We're ready to sync with the remote is. Click on the push icon in the top menu. I'll discuss the push process in a later video. Clicking the checkbox beside the master local branch will change the remote branch to match it. The default branch in Git is called the master branch, yes, but we'll discuss this in depth in future videos. Click OK when you're done and this will begin the push. If all goes well, there should be an origin master tag beside your first commit. Just to be sure it worked, we can head back to the GitLab site and look at our project. Here we can see it's updated our remote and our first commit has been pushed to it. 
Now I'll show you how to clone a repository is. A clone is essentially the same as copying the repository, however the remotes of the repository are not copied. To clone a repository, we need its URL or path. Copy your remote's URL and head back to source tree. Click the clone new icon in the top menu and click the clone repository tab. Paste your remote's URL into the source path text field and choose a destination path for your repository. When you're finished this, click clone. If all goes well, a repository will be cloned and you should have the same first commit as the one we pushed earlier. Let's remove a repository from source tree. To do this, right click on the repository's bookmark in the left side menu. Click delete this. You can choose to remove only the bookmark or to remove the full repo on disk. Deleting the repository will leave the git folder behind this, so remember to delete it as well. With our local or remote repository set up, we are now ready to use git. And that's it. Rate, comment and subscribe, yes. tell me how you're getting on. You can email me at retrotk2 at gmail.com with your git experience. Thank you for watching this, and I'll see you in the next video.